In this lesson, we're going to talk about something that's really important, which is to pay attention to the things at the top of the search panel. So I'm going to show you a couple of the things here, and we're going to focus in on the time date restriction operation. So let me show you what I mean here. In Google, you can do a search like this, say Fugu Paration Laws. Now Fugu is a kind of fish that's used in very high-end sushi, and it has to be prepared in a special way. So here we've got the regular search results, but I want you to pay attention to these things across the very top. This is the top set of selections. There's top, you can see here, videos. I can look on videos for that topic, or images, or news, or so on. But in particular, I want you to, sh to see more, because there's different options there, maps, books, and so on. There's also this thing here, search tools. If I click on that, what happens is it opens up a new sub-panel. I can change, for example, my location to, say, uh, say New York, New York. I can do that. But in this case, it's just fine. I'll just leave it at, at, at Mountain View, use my location in Mountain View. But more importantly, what I want to show you here is this Anytime filter. What this allows me to do is to, say, filter the results based on the time when the page was published to the web. So here, as you can see, I can filter by the last hour, past 24 hours, the past week, and so on. And so that works in the obvious way. If I click on the past year, I now get results from the web, Fuga preparation laws, only during 2015. Okay, and going actually back a full 12 months, back into 2014. Now I want to show you the custom range operation. So here, I know that something happened to the Fugu laws in Japan in 2012. So I'm going to say, let's go back to, I can go all the way back clicking like this using the widget, or I could type in the date directly. So I'm going to go from 1 slash 1 slash 2012 to, and now I can use my widget. I'm going to say up to November 2012. I select, say, the last day of that, like that. <coughs> I can select the last date. <coughs> I can select the last day like that. And now I say go, and that filters the web results based on this time restriction right up here. January 1, 2012 to November 30th, 2012. Make sense? Now, of course, you can see that those new Fugu laws have gone into effect in Japan primarily. Now, one thing that's really interesting about this is you can use this to search for the way the world thought about an issue at a particular time. So for example, when the World Cup 2022 was being chosen, what did the world think? How can we find out? Let's do that search. World Cup 2022. And now what I'm going to do is change this time restriction back to 2010, 2011. Okay, So I want to say custom range. And now I'm just going to type in the date because it's fast. 1 slash 1 slash 2010 to 1, let's do 12 slash 31 slash 2012. That's the period, I, that I roughly when the World Cup location was decided. So let's go check that out. And you can now see here lots of it, things that were posted to the web at that time. In particular, I can now click here on the News tab and now see news items that were posted to the web during that time span. You see how this works? So this is particularly handy when you want to go back in time and see how news was being reported at the time or how people were writing about it on the web. Let me do another search that's sort of closer to home for me. The 14th Congressional District, California. And I wanted to find out a little bit more about, say, the election. So here's a bunch of information about that. Mm, general stuff. Okay, what about, um, say, the election? I'm going to add that. And now I have interesting results here. But what I wanted to do was to find out what happened in 2011 during those election results. So now I go back to my search tools, anytime, custom range, 1 slash 1 slash 211, 12 slash 31 slash 2011. Now you see what I've done? Now I've got reports back from that time. 
so I can see what the debates were, what the topics were, what was going on. Two more things I want to show you. One of which is, remember the OR operation? I can say California OR CA, synonymizing those terms, California and CA. And those will be kind of the same result. That's not too surprising. But I can also now say, use my in-text operator from the previous lesson, in-text, and I'll say SU, another sort of senator, another politician in the area. And now I have results from that time, California or CA, about the election, requiring that the term SU, that person's name, be in the text. One last thing to show you. Here you see I show, I show it sorted by relevance. I click on that and say sort by date. And what this does is it gives me now a reverse order sort with the most recent, that is the latest in that time span, shown at the top from say December 29th, 2011, 27th, 22nd, you see. This is reverse ordering. So now I can scroll down to get closer to January, say click down here, number nine, and we're gonna have results from March. You see how this works. Go back in time that way. So you get the idea here. It's a fairly simple idea. You can restrict the search results based on the time that they were published to the web. Now note, they may have been written much earlier. They could be written in the 17th century, but if they were published to the web in say 2011, that's the date that will be attributed to that document. Go ahead and try this in the next activity and see, see how it goes for you.